When Texan Shinawatra bought Manchester City in 2007, becoming the first Asian owner of a Premier League club, he made quite the entrance. The former Prime Minister of Thailand was brought onto the stage in Albert Square, where he belted out what can be charitably described as an under-rehearsed rendition of the city anthem Blue Moon, lyric sheet in hand. But it was taken in good humour. From then on, he was known to the fans as Frank, a billionaire politician and telecoms magnate who promised to transform a club that had in recent years been in the shadow of Sir Alex Ferguson's all-conquering Manchester United side. But as historic as the moment was, it wouldn't quite end up that way. At least, not straight away. Texan Shinawatra was born into an ethnically Chinese middle-class family in the northern Thai city of Chiang Mai. He joined the royal police before leaving to start a computer business, which, in turn, morphed into a highly successful mobile phone corporation that made him a billionaire. He moved into politics, forming the populist Tyrak Thai Party, and won a landslide election in 2001, harnessing overlooked rural voters and upsetting Bangkok's military elite, who had been involved in a dozen coup attempts since World War II. He was persistently dogged with accusations that he had acquired his wealth through corruption, nepotism and graft, although Taksin dismissed them all as lies told by disgruntled opponents. Taksin grew up loving English football, but a pivotal moment came in 2001, shortly after his election, when Manchester United came to face the Thai national team in an exhibition match in Bangkok. Huge crowds followed the team wherever they went, and Sir Alex Ferguson presented a grinning Texan with a Manchester United shirt, complete with his name and the number 52, as it was his 52nd birthday. Manchester United won 2-1 in front of 65,000 ecstatic fans. After seeing the power and passion that could be harnessed from football, Taksin started looking in 2003 for a club for himself. His first attempt was to buy a 30% stake in Liverpool, but that floundered after it emerged that one way the funds would be raised was to set up a state lottery, essentially transferring the wealth from some of the poorest people on earth to the richest. But there was also the thorny issue of human rights. In 2003, Taksin's government had undertaken a brutal crackdown on the methamphetamine drug trade. NGOs like Amnesty International and Human Rights Watch claimed that more than 2,000 people died in extrajudicial killings. Taksin claimed the military had inflated the figures. Even after he had won re-election in 2005, the first Prime Minister in Thailand's history to peacefully win a second term, plans were afoot to buy a club. But in 2006, when at the UN in New York and deeply embroiled in a corruption scandal at home over the sale of his company Shincorp, tanks rolled onto the street to remove him from power. Despite the human rights concerns, the Premier League approved his 2007 bid to buy Manchester City for over £80 million. He still had hopes of returning to power, but now Taksin had a Premier League team to run. He initially wanted to hire Claudio Ranieri, but eventually plumped for Sven-Goran Eriksson, and the life of a Premier League owner could not have begun any better. City won the first three games of the season, including a victory over Manchester United. But as the results worsened, so did his relationship with Sven, who he sacked, ending his honeymoon period with the fans. The crucial moment, though, was his wife's conviction on corruption charges in Thailand. Taksin chose not to return to Thailand for fear of arrest and has been in exile ever since. The military seized his assets, making it virtually impossible for him to continue funding City, which he said was costing him £4 million a month in wages and transfer payments. To own a club in the Premier League, you have to have deep, 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 deep pockets, he said of that time. It burns your money quickly. I feel very sad I had to sell. I had no money after they froze my money. I had to borrow here and there. Taksin had to sell quickly, but there was a little-known buyer who had the cash. Sheikh Mansour bin Zahed Al Nayan was a little-known but leading member of the Abu Dhabi royal family, one of the Emirates of the United Arab Emirates. His family were also one of the richest in the world, with some estimates of their fortune stretching into the trillions of dollars. 
Sheikh Mansour bought the club for a rumoured £150 million, making Tatsin a handsome profit overnight. Manchester City became the richest club in world football and Taksin's turbulent year in charge was over. Taksin has never returned to Thailand. His sister Ying Gluck won the 2011 election that followed the end of military rule, but she too was removed in a coup largely due to fears in the military that Taksin might try and use his sister as a stepping stone to return to power. Today, at 69, he is divorced. He's lost half of his $2 billion fortune and living between Dubai and Paris. He says football club ownership is now beyond his means, but there is no doubt that he blazed a trail for other Asian businessmen to invest in European football. Some of those deals have gone well, like Taksin's former ally and friend Vichai Srivadhana Prabha, who bought Leicester City and later won the Premier League title. Others have not gone so well, like Carsten Young's purchase of Birmingham City in 2010. Young has finally been removed from the club, but he's now in jail in Hong Kong for money laundering. Taksin still thinks of his time at Manchester City every day. When asked what the strongest memory of that time was, it wasn't a specific football match or his rendition of Blue Moon in Albert Square. When I went to work in that club, I saw a group of people and they all wore black, like after a funeral. I asked them, what can I help you with? They replied, we are waiting for the official to put the ash of my husband in the pitch. My God, I never knew this before. He'd been a fan of City for 42 years. He passed away and asked to put his ashes on the pitch. He seemed as surprised by that in 2017 as he had been in 2007.